Okay, so this is a general scheme with a scheme with an overview of um, the main topics of what I would call the vital approach. This is a circular representation of the levels of experience, then in short, the main steps of the anamnesis, and then the uh, first categories of kingdoms and miasms of the, the analysis of a case. So the levels of experience is very important in every case because, as Hahnemann said, the vital disturbance is um, on an, uh, of the dynamis is situated beyond mind and body and expresses itself with symptoms on mind and body in the same way. I use this scheme, it is my scheme and it's for homeopathic purposes. I think it is very um, uh, helpful to know or to navigate the homeopath throughout uh, case taking and to make an analysis um, from the symptoms, to know where the symptoms come from. So, uh, we consider disease as a disturbance on the vital level, the vital being the dynamis, as Hahnemann told us, in the organon. Uh, the physical level is the most dense level, it's the um, physical body and it contains all the physical um, complaints and disturbance where a patient comes with. Eh? So this needs no further explanation. The energetic level or level 2 is an invisible body enveloping the physical body and it's um, uh, intimately intertwined with it. It's the energetic aspect of the physical body. Um, it is expressed in our vitality. That's an overall, I mean, an easy understandable measure of the energetic level. level. How much vitality does a person have? In uh, homeopathic uh, jargon, we would call this the level of generalities. The emotional level, or our third invisible body, is where our emotions are situated, our common human emotions, anger, grief, um, sadness, um, guilt, shame, uh, you know, all these common traits in different degrees, of course, and different mixtures in every person. Uh, and the mental, or the fourth level, is the, the other aspect of the uh, mind, eh? one and two being the body, three and four being the mind, and it's the, um, the level of our psychic functioning. In it we have the conscious, we have the uh, subconscious and we have the unconscious layers in there. And then we have the vital body or the vital layer, it's where our uniqueness, our individual experience of ourself is situated. So the disturbance on level 5 is expressed with signs and symptoms on mind and body. That's what we're trying to uh, understand, to discern and to hear during consultation. Which symptom on the physical level comes from the vital? Which symptom on the energetic, emotional or mental body is an expression of the vital disturbance? That's what we try to hear. All this together makes a coherent pattern and points to the remedy. Now back to the first scheme, the general scheme uh, of uh, main importance, of course, is the anamnesis. That's how, how to get your information from the patient. If you make a good anamnesis, most of the work is done. Let's say at least half of the work is done. Now, everybody is different and we have, of course, patients from all ages and with all kinds of different complaints. But in general, I could define a few steps uh, through case taking that are um, very important. The first thing is the patient comes in, tells about these complaints and we just um, listen or just prompt him a little bit further to talk about this chief complaint, these general complaints, what he wants to talk about, what is the reason he comes to us. And in the first part of the consultation the patient takes us to where the, 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 the complaint is situated. I call this where the treasure is hidden. By doing this, he will define the territory. That means the topics are chosen by the patient and we just follow. So in their main complaint, with their general um, 
uh, information, there sometimes will be spontaneous emotions uh, given or ideas given. We just let them come as the patient tells them. Only in the second uh, stage of the consultation we ask questions and only about the topics that the patients came with. So if he has a physical complaint on level one, we will ask everything about the physical complaint. What, how, how long, we look from it, we look to it from every angle. We want to know every detail of the main complaint. And we will check three times. And I'm serious. So if the patient tells it spontaneously, we wait, it will come again spontaneously. If he tells it three times, then we can be sure. We ask questions but only about the topics the patient uh, uh, came with himself. And our questions are, are aimed at level 5. This means we try to get the vital experience. How is it for you? How do you experience this? What, no matter what level he is talking about, our questions will be aiming at your individual experience of yourself. And only the third step, only at the last part of the interview, I would say, the homeopath can ask more direct questions and then they are um, directed at level 4 and level 5, more direct. All the other levels probably will be covered by then. The way we do this, level 4 is ask for fear and dreams. These are the unconscious um, uh, aspects of the mental level. The conscious being the ideas, convictions, rationalizations the patient probably will have talk, uh, talked about by the third uh, stage of the interview. We can talk about hobbies, we can ask for delusions. How do you experience this? What do you think about this? So we know what the patient is, um, how his inner world looks like. But this is very important, not to ask questions too early in the interview and not starting any topic that the patient doesn't mention by himself. That's the general uh, the general scheme. Eh? So, if we have an idea or a clear idea in, the, uh, in a good case taking, then we know what the vital disturbance of the patient is. And it's only on the vital level we can discern kingdom and miasm, which is of tremendous help in analyzing a case.